Hi, Fenville Elementary. Welcome back. Are you ready for more Stella Diaz? There it is. Has something to say? I am. Um, we are going to be reading starting at chapter six today on page 36. So why don't you get there while we talk about what went on yesterday? Remember, Stella finally got to new, meet the new student and she was a little roja, right? Because she was nervous because she said stuff in Spanish and that really worried her. And um, she also wasn't so sure about having a boy as a new student. But after Stanley gave her some cookies, she thought mm, maybe he wouldn't be so bad. We also learned a little bit about citizenship and that Stella was worried about being an alien. I wonder if we'll learn a little bit more about that today. Okay, are you ready? Hey, chapter six, here we go. Once a week, I leave my regular class for speech class. Speech is where I learn to speak properly. This means how all the letters and words are supposed to sound in English. At least that's what my speech teacher, Mrs. Thompson says. Good morning, Stella, Ms. Thompson says as I enter the room. Ms. Thompson is seated at the center of a bean-shaped table in a small room. As usual, she's dressed like a ballet teacher in a black turtleneck with her hair pulled back in a bun. Good morning, Ms. Thompson, I say, as I hesitantly sit down across from her. I wonder how Stella feels about speech class. Well, how's your dad doing? Good, I said, looking down while tapping my fingers on the table. When I first started seeing Ms. Thompson, she would come over to our apartment for after school lessons. This was when I was in kindergarten. Dad would be home during the lessons because mom worked. Ms. Thompson got along really well with dad. He's very likable. He can always make people laugh, even if they can't quite understand what he says all the time. Dad speaks English worse than I do. He even talked to Ms. Thompson about taking speech class to improve his pronunciation, but it never happened. Back then, my parents had just divorced and dad still lived in Chicago. He had a job, but he was only part-time at a karaoke store that his friend owned. When I asked him what he did there, he said that he kept inventory of machines they sold. I don't even know what that means, but I do know that when absolutely no one else was in the store, I'd sing while he started stared at the computer. He didn't work there long though. Dad was, has never been good at keeping jobs. He lived in his own tiny apartment then. It was the size of my room with a kitchen. Is he still in Colorado? Yes, I say, grabbing my cheeks with my hands. They feel warm. A couple of years ago, dad's brother, my tío Carlos, or Uncle Carlos, gave dad a job at his store in Colorado. Now dad lives in his own house and goes skiing almost every day in the winter. I know because he shows me pictures he takes with his professional camera. Is your dad visiting for the holidays, she asked. I shake my head no. Too bad. It would be good for you two to be together, she said. I sigh. I can never tell her what I really think like that I don't want my parents to get back together or that I don't really miss my dad. It would sound mean, but why should I? All they did was argue about secret grown-up things. What the grown-up things were, I don't even know, but I do know it made mom sad, which is not good at all. Nick tells me he'll explain to me when I'm older. And I don't really miss dad because he never keeps his promises. When he still lived in Chicago, he promised to teach me how to ride a bike, but he never did. He'd also forget to pick up Nick and me from school half the time, especially when he got a girlfriend. Walking home in the snow with a heavy backpack is never fun. Now, when it comes to my birthday, I just get free things from my uncle's store. If I ask dad for anything, even a book, never comes. Kind of disappointing, huh? See, I say, hoping a short answer will make the conversation end. I just wish you would stop asking so many questions. No Spanish right now, Stella, because remember she's in speech class to learn how to speak English better. She always says that when I accidentally say a word in Spanish. It's not like I even speak that much anyway, I mother. What's that, Stella? 
Make sure you enunciate. That means say every syllable of the word. She lifts up her hand to her mouth. <sighs> Nothing I say. I hope that was clear enough. Just then the other students, Janelle and Ramon walk into the, oh, Janelle and Roman walk into the room. Finally, a break for me. I, a, I scribble swirls on my notebook page as she asks them how they're doing. Roman talks for a while. He's all excited that his family is going back home to Russia for the holidays. Roman is always jazzed to talk since he just graduated from ESL classes to regular classes. So ESL means English as a second language. We begin today's session like we normally do with mouth, mouth exercises. We puff our cheeks like puffer fish and follow that with deep breathing. That's to make sure we are speaking from our stomachs. Can you puff your cheeks like a puffer fish? Then we practice our and busy bees over and over. Since day one, Ms. Thompson has been correcting my pronunciations using a bag full of flashcards that have pictures of clowns, bees, and other things. I remember it took a really long time for her to agree that I was saying three and tree differently. From there, we go through the alphabet, which isn't too bad, even though there are a couple of letters like the vowels that sound different in Spanish. For good measure, she always says, I do well except for V and B. It's been three years and she still doesn't like how I say V and B. Despite how annoying it can be, speech class can also be a little escape. I get to leave my class and be in a small quiet room with just two other kids. It's especially good now since I keep turning Roja around Stanley. The other day he asked me what time it was and I was so surprised I spilled my bucket of colored pencils on the floor. After the alphabet, we practice big words. Stella, can you say refrigerator, Miss Thompson asked. I nod and stare at her and I say, refrigerator. Good, Stella, maybe just a little louder next time. I groan. People are always telling me to speak up. I can never really figure out why. It sounds loud in my head. Janelle, can you say refrigerator? Janelle says a word that I don't even recognize. At least I sound better than her, I think. Then I feel a little bad because Janelle gets made fun of by some of the kids at school. She has a lisp, which makes everything she says hard to understand. So a lisp is kind of like when you make extra sounds when you're speaking. She always sounds like she's eating peanut butter sandwich. Despite everything, Janelle is still really friendly and kind. I always try to be extra nice to her in speech, and I always wave to her at recess. I look up at the clock, only 30 minutes left. Good, I'm really excited to get back to class today. We're going to play math games and see who can add, subtract, and multiply the fastest. I'm really good at it, and it's the only time I like Miss Bell calling me up in front of the class. I love showing people that I'm smart whenever I can. Numbers are also easy to say, not like letters. Whenever I hear someone spell a word out loud, my brain kind of goes weird. It slows down like the gears on a rusty bike, and I worry people think I look stupid, which I hate. You guys ever have any worries like that? I do sometimes. After we practice other big words like conditioner and computer, Miss Thompson sends us back to class. Before you go, here's a treat for working so hard. Miss Thompson gives us stickers when we do a good job, and they are excellent stickers. Sometimes if we do really well, she even has the ones that you can scratch and sniff. I have a binder filled with them at home. When I look at or think of my binder, I feel a little better about Miss Thompson. Each sticker shows how much I've improved my speech all because of her. I get two scratch and sniff stickers today, a strawberry one and a grape one for my collection. Thank you, Miss Thompson, I say, looking her in the eyes. Oh, you're welcome, my dear, she says, looking back. I smell my stickers and I leave the room. I race back from speech to find Miss Bell standing in front of the class. Everyone is in a new seat. 
she mixes us around when we're playing math games so we can go against new students. Perfect timing, Stella. We're about to start. She points to an empty chair. Why don't you take a seat at the table with Jessica Anderson and Ben Shaw? Uh-oh. Jessica. I walk over to the table and try to sit down, but Jessica won't move over. I clear my throat, <clears> throat> hoping she'll take the hint. I want to say something to Jessica, but I'm afraid she'll say something mean. Ben finally moves over to make space for me. I like Ben. He's so easygoing. He just likes making everyone laugh. Ms. Val looks at Stanley and says, now Stanley, this is your first time, so just try to do your best. Everyone else, you know the drill. Stanley says, Yes, ma'am. Miss Bell laughs. What good manners you have, Stanley. There's a gold whistle around Miss Bell's neck that she blows to start each round. At the beginning of each round, she turns over a card with a math problem. Miss Bell says, we're playing spelling bee style. So I'll have to take her word for it since I've never done a spelling bee before. Whoever gets the answer right goes to the next round until there are only two players left. The questions start really easy, like two plus two equals four, but they get way harder toward the end. Ready? Miss Bell blows the whistle. A few kids get knocked out right away, but I get all the answers correct. I feel proud that everyone can see that I'm smart. Before I know it, I'm at the last round. It's me, Michelle, and Stanley. I'm stunned. Michelle is always good at math, but Stanley? I didn't expect Stanley to be good at math. As Michelle sits down, I start to feel a little nervous. It's now Stanley Mason with me in the last round. Everyone is cheering for Stanley. Go Stanley, says Jessica. Miss Bell grabs the last flash card and asks us if we're ready. I nod my head. Focus, I say to myself. Stanley grins and says, I'm ready. I feel Roja again. And I turn my head to Miss Bell. She flips the card. It's four times seven. 28, I think. But I can't talk. I'm trying so hard to get the words out. But my mouth is too dry. I even try puffing at my cheeks like we do in speech class. But nothing is working. My mouth only feels drier. Then I hear Stanley pipe up. 28. Miss Bell says, correct. You're the winner, Stanley. Way to go, Stanley, the class cheers. I just cover my Roja face with my hands. This is a new low. I couldn't even say numbers today. Man, that's a bummer. Stella worked really hard and she was really confident with her numbers. But sometimes we all get tripped up on words, don't we? I know I do. Well, that's all we're gonna read for today. But remember, Tomorrow is Blackhawk Day. I mean, not Blackhawk Day, Blackout Day. So make sure you wear all black tomorrow to celebrate those fish that live way deep in the dark ocean, okay? All right, thanks for reading. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.